Hi, I'm Tim, and it's time to help you choose what's on your table this weekend. In 2017, Plan B Games did a really cool thing. They released the first in what would be a trio of games, all designed by Emerson Matsuchi, called the Century Series. Now, there's three games in the Century Series, and what they did is they released three games, one in 2017, one in 2018, and one in 2019, and all of them were designed to take place in a different location, probably at a different time or slightly different time from the last. But what was cool about it is that all three of these games could fit together in some way if you bought them all, or they could play alone. So this week, we're gonna go through all three of them. I'm gonna show you each of them, and I'm gonna show you how each of them works together too with the subsequent editions. So with no further ado, here we have the very first one. We have Century Spice Road. Now this one, as I said, was released in 2017. It's a two to five player game. Uh, I would call this a light complexity game. And the box says it takes about 30 to 45 minutes. Now our experience has been that it takes us about 30 minutes for a lower player count and 40 minutes for a higher player count. If you have new players at the table, I would add no more than 10 minutes to your budgeted time for teaching the game. Century Spice Road takes place many centuries ago and the spice trade was the most lucrative market in the entire world. Now players, take on the role of a caravan leader represented by this card here is your caravan, traveling across the Mediterranean to Spice Road, represented by the mat, uh, in search of fame and fortune. Now, four spices are used in Spice Road and they're each represented by a different color cube. We have turmeric, saffron, cardamom, and cinnamon. Turmeric is the least valuable, cinnamon is the most valuable, and it goes up in order like that. Now on your turn, a player can do one of four things. Each player starts off with a hand of two cards. You can play one of the cards from your hand. So in this case, if I were to play this card, I would get two yellow cubes to put in my caravan. If I were to play this card, it says I can upgrade twice. I can either take two cubes and upgrade them to the next color level, or I could take one cube and upgrade it twice to that color level. The next thing I can do is I can claim any of the points cards on the top. Now on the bottom of each point card, it tells you which spices you need to be able to claim it. In the case of this one, it says it wants two yellow, two red, and two brown spices, which this player has. You can trade them in. And at the end of the game, for having this card, I'll get 15 points. We move this card down. We put one new one up. Now if you happen to take one of the two cards at the end, you get to take a coin. This coin will get you one point at the end of the game. The gold coin will get you two points at the end of the game. The third thing that you can do is you can buy one of these merchant cards. Now, the way that you buy them is that um, if you take the leftmost card, you can just pick it up and add it to your hand. But if you take a card, say here, and this is a good one to take because it gives you three of the yellow cubes, then you actually have to put one of the spices from your caravan on each of the cards to the left. So if I wanted to take that in my hand, I would do that, it would be mine. Everything kind of shuffles over after that. The last thing you can do on your turn is rest. So all the cards that you've played, you actually have to take a turn to pick your hand back up and then it's yours again. Now the game ends when one player has gotten five of these point cards and then the current round ends and then whoever has the most points wins. You get points by having these point cards from these coins or any spice in your caravan that is red or higher. Now the main mechanics in Century Spice Road are card drafting, hand management, set collection, action retrieval, and resources that get higher in value when they're unchosen. If I had to pick three things that we really like about this game, the first one is that it's so easy to teach and easy to learn and easy to play. It takes 30 to 45 minutes. It's a light complexity game. Uh, you know, my threshold is could I teach it to my, to my parents? And I could, um, I haven't, but I could. So it makes it a nice game to bring out to a table that might be new gamers. Another thing that I really like about this is that it's another one of those games where you don't quite know who's winning until the end. I always enjoy those games, so anytime a game has that feature, you know I'm going to say it's something that I really like about it. The last thing I like about it is that um, the aesthetics are fun to play with. It's a really easy game on the eyes. If you get the play mat that I had, it really adds a lot to the game, makes it more organized and easier to play. Um, and it's just a fun game to begin the, or end any night with, really.
Now, the next game in the Century series is Century Eastern Wonders, released in 2018. Now, uh, this game is a two to four player game. It's light to medium complexity. The box says it takes 30 to 45 minutes. We find in a low player count, you're talking about 30 minutes. A higher player count, we've had games go to 60 minutes. Just like the other game, I'd add about 10 minutes if you have any new players at the table as well. Century Eastern Wonders, just like Spice Road, takes place centuries ago, but this time, instead of on Spice Road, it takes place in the famed Spice Islands. Now, in this game, each player is a merchant or privateer on a ship, again, trading spices and going around the different Spice Islands to um, either trade spices or sell spices at different ports. Now, each player has their own set of outposts here. That's these little buildings there. Their own cargo hold, just like in Spice Road, you have a cargo hold. But you also have your own boat that's going to sail the seas uh, around the Spice Islands to trade, sell, and collect different spices. Now, on your turn, first of all, you have the choice of moving. Everybody gets a choice to move. So I can move um, anywhere from here to different tiles or to different islands. Um, basically, the way it works is that you can move one space. If you want to move more than one space, then you have to be willing to leave a spice behind on that tile when you exit the second space. So if I wanted to go one, two, I would have to leave a spice from my cargo hold behind here to be able to go extra spaces. I could go th three, four if I wanted to and leave more spices behind. If you land and finish on a tile um, where there already is a spice, then you collect it and you put in your cargo hold. Also, if you finish on a tile with an opponent, so there's the white boat there, you must give each opponent one spice each from your cargo hold as well. Now next, when you land on a space, um, you can take either a market action. So the way that works is you get to put out an outpost from your collection here, and you have to put out the same outpost that matches the little symbol on the tile. Now you probably can't see, but that's a little T symbol. So I'd have to take the T outpost and put it there. Now at the end of the game, I'm gonna get bonus points, and you can see the number one uncovered here for every outpost that's on the board. The other thing is that every time you finish a vertical column of outposts, you get to take a bonus tile. So I've taken a bonus tile that's worth six points. Now, once you have an outpost on the tile, you can then take the market action on that tile. So in this case, this one wants you to trade in five yellow spices, which in this game represent ginger, to gain three green spices, which are chili. So that's the market action. The next action you could do is you could sell your spices at a port. There's four ports around the board. Now, kind of like the points cards in Spice Road, these tiles are going to give you points based on which spices you can sell to the port. So this one wants uh, two ginger spices, a chili, a tea spice, and a clove spice, and it's going to be worth 13 points at the end of the game. I have those in my cargo hold, so I'm going to put them back in the middle and take those points. Now, the last action that you can take is called harvest. Harvest is simply, you don't have anything else that you can do, so you're gonna take two yellow cubes from the supply and place them in your cargo hold. Now the game ends when one player has four of these little victory point tiles, and players are gonna get points based on the victory point tiles that they have. They're also gonna get points on the numbers that are uncovered here, so you can see it ends up being worth more as you uncover more than two points and three points. You're also gonna get points for any victory points on any bonus tiles that you may have. And just like in Spice Road, you're going to get one point each for every cube um, that's in your cargo hold that isn't ginger or yellow cube. So you're going to get one point each for every chili, tea, or cloves cube that you have as well. Now, I promise to show you how all the games work together because that's probably the coolest part about the Sentry games. So when I'm playing Eastern Wonders, I can take the uh, cards that you start with in Century Spice Road that I showed you, and you can keep a hand. And on your turn, you can choose to play them instead of doing one of the other actions I described. And just like in Spice Road, you can choose to buy more merchant cards as well by taking the leftmost one, or if you take one that's for, to the right, putting one cube on each card to the left for whoever may take it next. The mechanics in Century Eastern Wonder are modular board, grid movement, pickup and deliver, tile placement, and set collection. You know, if I had to pick three things that we really like about Eastern Wonders, it would be this. First of all, it's a little bit different than the last game. It adds that boat uh, component to it, so the mechanics are slightly different, and it gives a little bit of a different feel while not losing the feel of what made that first game good. The other thing that I really enjoy about this game is the modular board. It makes the game different 
every time and your strategy is going to, have to be a little bit different every time and how you move your boat is going to be a little bit different every time. The beginner's game says uh, to use a basic board that's outlaid in the instructions but after that it teaches you how to make your own boards with different shapes and designs. The last thing that I really enjoy about this game is that there's more ways to victory or there's more ways to get points than the first game had. So it does make it a little bit more of a full experience and it does keep everybody in the game a little bit better. And that's through the outposts that are also going to give you points on top of selling spices as well. All in all, this is another great game for us at the beginning or end of any night and one that I recommend to anybody. The last one in this series came out in 2019, and it's called Century A New World. Now this game is a two to four player game. It's light to medium complexity. The box says it takes about 30 to 45 minutes. I find it's about 30 to 40 minutes, again, depending on player count. And just like all the others, I would add 10 minutes um, if there's any new players at the table, just to explain the game a little bit. In Century A Brave New World, this time, uh, the travelers have been exploring and they have found the new world in their attempts to circumnavigate the globe. So it takes place presumably in North America. Now, the four resources in this game, the hierarchy stays the same, yellow being the least valuable, brown being the most valuable, but we have corn, meat, tobacco, and fur this time. Now, Brave New World is a little bit different than the other games in that it's more of a worker placement game um, than some of the others where they use cards and boats to uh, trigger different actions. But basically on your turn, you can place workers to do different things. And there's a cost of how many workers you have to place to do those things as well. So for instance, taking this action costs two workers, taking this action costs one. Now you can use your workers to do things such as get more spices. So, and you can put them in your cargo hold here. Um, once these different locations are unlocked, you can use them to get spices in a different way. So some of the trading actions that you see in Spice Road and in Eastern Wonders as well are prevalent there. And then just like in the other games, you can trade in those things to get points as well. Um, but the thing is, is that when you trade them and you get points, you also have the option of taking a bonus tile. Um, that's gonna give you points at the end of the game based on what you have in your hand. Now this game ends after one player has gotten eight of these point cards here. And players are gonna get points based on the point cards themselves, the bonus tiles that they may have gotten throughout the game as well. If they unlock these exploration tiles to open up these spaces, sometimes there's a point value on them and they're gonna get that as well. And just like the other Sentry games, they're gonna get one point for every uh, commodity that they own that isn't yellow. So any other red, green, and brown commodities. Now, just like Eastern Wonders, I wanted to show you how you can integrate the other two Sentry games into Brave New World. Now, you can add the merchants from Spice Road and use your worker movements to go there to use and gain these cards in different ways. And if you use Eastern Wonders, um, there's also some added worker action spaces that you move boats and use the market action tiles as you would in, in Eastern Wonders as well. The mechanics in A New World are action retrieval, contracts, set collection, and worker placement. You know, if I had to pick three things that I really enjoy about this game, first of all, it's that it takes the concept of Sentry but adds worker placement to it. The other games don't have any worker placement, and I'm a sucker for worker placement. So you bring a worker placement to any game for me and you have my interest. So I really enjoy that they've used that with the Sentry concept here. The other things that I really enjoy about this game, now first of all, there's four ways to play. You know, I could play a new world on its own and it's a great game, but you can also incorporate the first two games. And I showed you in the video earlier how it works with both Spice Road and Eastern Wonders uh, together with it. But you can play this as a standalone game or you can add just the Spice Road game components to it or just the Eastern Wonders components to it or both. And there's actually a four part story um, within the game if you do that. So, uh, sorry, I should correct myself, a three part story. So there's part one with um, A New World and Spice Road, part two with A New World and Eastern Wonders and part three with all three of them. So it makes for um, a very replayable game because you can make it different basically every time. The last thing that I like about it, um, I know it's kind of a weird thing to like about it, but I actually like the fact that the commodities this time aren't exactly spices. I know, weird, but it just, it makes it different. It's 
for lack of a better word, it spices it up a little bit. Uh, and it just brings a little bit of a different feel to the game. And just in, as a whole, like this game just feels different than any of the other Century games without losing that core concept that makes the Century series so great. Hey, now here's something fun. All three of the Sentry boxes go together to make one large panorama picture. That's pretty cool too. Now, I hope you enjoyed learning about the Sentry board game series as much as I enjoyed sharing them with you this week. If you like these videos, hit subscribe below so that way you can get them every time there's a new one out or even hit that little bell so you get a notification anytime we release a new episode. Or please always comment below and let's compare notes. Share with us what's on your table this weekend.